I'm Cameron Sullivan. Nothing to do with TV Guy, that's just the cover, but I'm going to rate the top 20 worst shows of all time. Here are some quality shows, and if you hate more than one of these following shows, then something's wrong with you. But this is just a test to see where your quality lies. Take a look. Okay, I sure hope you didn't hate more than one of those shows because then something is wrong with you and we're going to have to disagree extremely. Anyway, there's been lots of guilty pleasure shows, but I'm rating shows that were just not worth seeing. So, take a look here. Number one, Kath and Kim. I love Molly Shannon. She was hilarious on Saturday Night Live. Selma Blair's a good actress. She's from Hellboy. This doesn't work. It's just so dumb. And I love dumb, funny comedies. But this doesn't give you a reason to care about anyone. This is actually a remake of a popular Australian sitcom. Back in its about 85. But there's, this show is just pointless. I'm glad they took it off the air. Number two, Stargate Infinity. Okay, most popular movies and shows like Rambo and Star Trek have had corny cartoon spin-offs, but they were good for their time. If nobody heard about them, nobody cared. If kids enjoyed it, they enjoyed it till they were at least 10 years old. Then they grew up. But this show was so unpopular with many kids that it only lasted one year. Uh, number three... Viva Laughlin. Never heard of it? You're probably glad you didn't, cuz. <laughs> this is a really big turn. Um, Hugh Jackman and Melanie Griffith. Were, it's about a Las Vegas casino. It's also a part musical. But it's so dumb, the characters are unlikable, that this only lasted a few episodes on CBS. But ironically, in Australia, they canceled it after the first episode. Good for them. Number four, The O'Reilly Factor. Okay. MSNBC is just as biased as Fox News. True, true. But shouting at people in an interview and just downright insulting them as in telling your opinion of the news as opposed to the actual news. That's not news. Okay, number five. Um, <laughs> this is a bad show. Star Wars The Clone Wars. I love the 2003 one that was... By Jenny Tartowski, who did Samurai Jack and Powerpuff Girls, I believe. But this one is just like Pixar done by Z-list people. In fact, oh god, th this was spawned off a movie that had a short release in theaters, and now every Sunday I'm tortured by this show on Cartoon Network. In fact, it's the reason I don't watch Cartoon Network. And Okay, you guys can say, I'm being cruel, it's a children's show. No, get out. <laughs> I know a bad show when I see it, and I love Star Wars, especially in animated form, but this doesn't cut it. <laughs> especially when I know lots of friends of mine, they have younger brothers and sisters, and they even dislike the show. They would rather watch all the good shows that Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon killed off mysteriously. Number six. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry to hate on Mr. T for you A-Team fans. You can call me racist all you want. It's got nothing to do with that. This is just a dumb reality show. In fact, I don't think it's even real. Which is the problem with reality shows nowadays. You can't tell if it's real. They don't show the time frame in which they record it. Anyway, yeah, this show is dumb. The, Mr. T goes to various businesses and tries to make their sales better, or that's what I remember of it. Anyway, it's no longer on. In 2004, NBC decided it was time to make a spinoff to Friends, and spinoffs usually aren't that good. I mean, I know there's some good spinoffs. Stargate and Star Trek and Buffy have tons of them. People differentiate on them, but for the most part, spinoffs aren't that great. And Matt LeBlanc isn't the greatest actor. In fact, he's not the best out of the entire original Friends cast. And all the Friends people 
can get annoying if they're just focused on one person. That's why everyone liked it, because it was an ensemble cast. It wasn't just Joey. <laughs> okay, number eight is a show so horrifying I'm not going to say it. And I love PBS. They got great kids shows and documentaries and educational programs, but <laughs> even TV Guide hates this show. So, In fact, this dinosaur even got his movie. A movie that was released in theaters. <laughs> Number nine. Okay, spinoff. Another spinoff. Um, whether everyone likes CSI or Law and Order better, that that's all their preference. But those both those shows have had good spinoffs, but this one just doesn't cut it. New York is better, but <laughs> the main problem with this is the stars. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm not a big fan of DJ Caruso, but I'm not. Hater, either. I just this doesn't work. <laughs> Number ten. Okay, that's so Raven. Yes, you guys are gonna get at me for hating on another kid show. Well, there are good kid shows and there are bad kid shows, and this is one of them. Having one of the former Huxtables by herself with her annoying family, it doesn't cut it. Now, yeah, I'll agree. Miley Cyrus is more annoying, but <laughs> if you had to. <laughs> cable like I did and had siblings flipping this on and off, you would get just as mad at it as I was. So, yeah. Well, number 11, Cavemen. They were entertaining as 30 second ads, not so entertaining as a sitcom. Void at all costs. Number 12, The Moment of Truth, where people are hooked up to a lie detector and forced to face their sins. Not very good show. Number 13 is Shasta McNasty. It's a dumb, hip show about this band who parties and makes music. And all their music is pretty bad, and come on. Who likes Jake Boosie, the son of Gary Boosie? It's just, no. Number 14 is a show starring William Shatner, T.J. Hooker, yes. <laughs> got a perverted last name and it's by Aaron Spelling who did some of the most popular yet ridiculous soap operas of all time. Number 15, the update of Knight Rider. The original was a cult hit, but this is like all the horror movies of today. It's a remake of a not so great show and guess what you get? You get an even crappier movie, show. So boy, number 16. I'm going to get a little heat for this, but The Lone Gunman it's a spin-off of the X-Files, and while those guys were interesting, just having them by themselves, not so interesting. Eh. Out of all the pointless spin-offs, this was one, and they predict how 9-11 happened. Why? Number 17, Baywatch. <laughs> Don't ask me how this lasted 10 years, there was obviously too many stupid people watching it. Number 18, another pointless show that's been on for a while, where people around the country tune in. I don't know if they just tune in just to see how bad it is, or just how many good actors waste their talent. Avoid. Avoid! Number 19, the second to last one. Not Jerry Seinfeld, but Jerry Springer. Why is this show still in syndication? Why? Do people enjoy seeing other people fight? It's not funny. It's not entertaining. It yes, number 20 is Lost. I cannot stand this show. I love sci-fi and action, but when you do it to the point of where you can't suspend reality, it's not worth watching. I have no problem with the actors, I just have a problem with all the polar bears and supernatural stuff. I know this is by the same guy who did Mission Impossible 3 and Alias and Star Trek, but why? This is where all the bad shows come from. This one, I'm convinced. Anyway, if you enjoyed that, please subscribe to my channel. It's the equivalent of a compliment for me, so if you enjoyed it, subscribe please. Take care and have a nice day.